What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the Aviator Chris channel. Today, we're going to take the stock Microsoft Flight Simulator C172SP G1000 model and see how it stacks up to the real thing based on my uh, actual real-world flight experience. All right, guys, so I just wanted to do a quick video here comparing the Microsoft Flight Sim 172 versus some of my experience in the real thing. Just a little about me. Uh, I currently hold a private pilot's license, uh, pursuing my instrument rating, about 200 hours total time across uh, four different uh, actual Cessnas. Uh, one is the 172N model, which is carbureted. Uh, the other three are fuel-injected. Uh, and two of the four are the G1000. And I also have a little bit of time in a Piper Warrior and an Archer. So what I wanted to do here is basically um, just kind of compare its top five categories that came to my mind. Startup procedures, ground handling, takeoff, landing, and maybe we'll do a couple of maneuvers here, uh, some air work, and, and just kind of see, you know, and I'll talk through what I feel the differences are or aren't between the planes. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so first up is the startup procedures. Um, I can say from experience that the startup procedure from the stock 172 is far from realistic. Uh, you pretty much cannot flood uh, or over prime or under prime this engine. It will just start. You could put the mixture in, turn the key, and it's going to start right up. So that's that is a key difference. Um, Again, this is also a stock default aircraft in the sim. It was not meant to be study level. Circuit breakers aren't monitored and all uh, modeled rather, and all that fun stuff. Okay, so we'll go ahead and boot up the G1000s. And for the most part, it's it's a close enough startup sequence. There's some few differences here and there, but uh, nothing too major. We'll turn on our beacon. We'll prime for three seconds, but again, it doesn't matter. Uh, in the real thing it does, but uh, in this it doesn't. And we'll go ahead and crank the engine. Next up we'll talk about ground handling. Uh, taxing in the real 172 is a bit like taxing on ice skates, and that's more or less what we see here. So I'll, I'll say it's got a good, I won't say it's 100% uh, accurate, it's very close, though. Uh, it does require tow brakes to make sharp turns. Uh, it does have that feeling like taxiing on uh, ice skate feeling. Um, so there's definitely uh, definitely some decent ground handling in this sim, uh, at least in regards to this plane. It's not uh, it's not too twitchy. Um, the plane isn't just you know zipping all over the place if you're hitting and you know going crazy with the rudders. It's it's doing more or less what the real thing would do. So in that regard, I'm actually pretty impressed. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're holding short of runway 32 at my home base of uh, Republic Airport here in Long Island. We're going to pull that onto 32, take off, and I'm going to kind of overlay some real-world footage uh, side by side, hopefully, um, in post to kind of see how they compare. And I'll talk through what I feel is different here or not. Now, I set winds about 10 knots right down the runway, um, so there shouldn't be any weather vaning effect, and we'll see, you know, just how much or not uh, right rudder will need to actually take off. So we got full forward, lights are set. Okay, engine instruments are in the green. We're gonna go full power. And not much right rudder is required. I'm actually finding I have to put left rudder to get back to center line. It's not really wanting to uh, to go to the right there. We've got airspeed alive. Gonna rotate. Wind seven knots right down the runway. And... So I'll say once we're off the ground, it's not bad. Uh, it is requiring some right, uh, right rudder to keep the, uh, the plane coordinated. And uh, this is... Uh, it's not bad once you're off the ground. However, the, the ground roll required none to almost a little bit of left rudder as for performance i'll say it's it's close enough to the real thing uh but i do feel like this aircraft you know currently loaded up in weight and balance and full fuel uh it's outperforming for the warm temperatures that i have set um by just a little bit here uh, normally i'm between five and, and eight hundred uh feet per minute and you know i'm between eight and a thousand i was at thirteen hundred for for a bit there uh, climbing out at about a 79, 80 knots here. 
Okay, so we're leveled off around 3,000 feet or so here. We're doing about 105 knots, 113 true. About 2460 uh, on the engine RPM. And I would say, performance-wise, at cruise, this is more or less accurate from what I've seen in the real thing. All right, so we'll go into slow flight really quick just to kind of see how that performs. Get our full flaps in. See where we're at maintaining altitude. The real thing is about 1900 RPM to kind of maintain, and that's pretty much where I am. About 1930. And we're maintaining 29, uh, about 230 feet and about 46 knots. I need just a little bit more power to hold. Usually varies depending upon weather between 1900 and 2100 to uh, maintain for slow flight. It's about a little bit above a climb, about a climb. I'll say the, the controls are sloppy, how they would be in the real thing, without, without too much bank happening. Might be a little bit less sensitive in the real plane. And just making some turns here, this... I mean, this feels good. I mean, I'll say uh, it's requiring the rudder inputs that are required in the real thing. A little bit of extra power to make the turn and maintain the altitude. I'd say this is not bad. I'm getting a little too much of a bank there. We're at 2,800 feet. We're going to do a power off stall just to see how she performs there. I feel like I have a little bit more elevator authority than I would in the real thing. Nose down. Power. One notch of flaps. See, so it just released the nose a little bit. I felt like it went a little too much below the horizon than it would have. Got positive rate up. And we'll clean up the airplane. So I feel like in the power off stall, it went a little more nose low than I would have liked or that I felt like I was really calling for compared to the real thing. Um, but for the most part, I mean, it felt good. It, it feels good enough for a home-based flight simulator. Um, home-based flight simulators really aren't used to practice maneuvering like that. Um, I think they're really, they excel at doing uh, instrument procedures and procedural things and going through flows and checklists and stuff like that. I feel like that's really where a home base sim will shine. Um, getting the feel for the airplane, you really need to do that in the real thing. All right, we'll do a quick power on stall. Let's we'll see how it performs there. So we're going power in, nose up. Right where it is in, feels pretty good. Climbing, keeping wings level. And nose down, powers in. I'd say that actually feels very close to accurate for the power on stall. Okay, we're gonna come in for a landing here. I got the weather set pretty much to one of the last few times I flew. Uh, winds right down the runway. Uh, about 10 gusting 15 and uh, it's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit outside so we'll see uh, we'll see how this stacks up to the real thing based upon how it feels how it floats uh, how it touches down and uh, and all that so we got our first notch of flaps in we're a little bit high so it powers out slope. Next notch of flaps. I do feel a little bit of ballooning from the flaps, which is good. We're at 500 feet. We'll go last notch of flaps. Let's get some power in. Feeling the updrafts by the cemetery here, which 
I'd say that's actually pretty realistic, although that really doesn't have much to do to the flight model. That's just more to the due to the sim itself, which is it's interesting that I'm feeling that. The power settings are probably about on par for what the real thing would be. About 15 to 1700, give or take. About 65, slowing down to 60 over the airport property. Trees powers out. I would say that's that's a pretty close to the real thing landing, I would say. Floats just like a Cessna does, even though it's pretty much on speed and it touched down right around the thousand footers, so I would say, all in all, that's, uh, I'm pretty impressed with, for a default aircraft, how well it seems to perform. All right, everyone, so thanks for watching. That pretty much concludes this video. Uh, I just wanted to throw something quick together, um, just to kind of go over some of the, the key things that I guess you, you'd look for in, in a simulation, at least for me. Um, I feel, for the most part, this G1000 Cessna is, is pretty on the money. Uh, for most things, uh, except on the takeoff ground handling. I think that's that's the major thing where if I was going to rate it out of five, I'd say it's like a, a 1.5 out of five. Um, everything else is like a, a four out of five. Honestly, the way I feel like it, the plane flies, um, the way the avionics handle, uh, even though it's not really part of the actual flight model that we're kind of taking a look at here. Um, everything seems to be fairly authentic. Um, from what I would say. So, again, take this with a grain of salt for what you will from a 200-hour total time pilot. Um, these are just my thoughts, and we're going to do a fun video on it. So, uh, thanks, everyone, for watching, and uh, see you on the next one.